Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another adventure in real estate where we talk about all things real estate. Today, I have Ms. Laura Benjamin with us again. How are you, Laura? I'm doing great. Thank you. Good, good. Laura, lots of discussions have been going on about the National Association of Realtors Settlement Agreement. So I'm going to step out of the way. I can't fade off the camera, but I'm going to step out of the way and I'm going to just say, Laura, what do we need to know? What can you tell us? Let me give you a brief overview. It is hot news and uh, every realtor in the nation will be impacted. Let me start with over the last three years, let's say, there have been class action lawsuits, about 20 of them filed across the nation. None of them filed in Virginia, thankfully, all from the perspective of home sellers alleging that they paid too much because they were forced to pay for the buyer agent's commission. On Friday, March 15th, the National Association of Realtors announced a settlement agreement with all those plaintiffs um, that would bring those lawsuits to resolution. The settlement agreement does have to be confirmed by the court, but uh, the agreement is 108 pages. I have oh, uh, read the 108 pages and tried to drill down to the impact. And the impact really is twofold. One, and this one's not very hard for us, um, all realtors across the nation will be required to have a buyer agency agreement signed before they show buyers houses, properties. Virginia happens to be one of 18 states where buyer agreements are already the law of the land. So we already have the forms in place, our realtor members already use these forms. So for realtors in Virginia, that one's not very hard. The second impact is that the MLS will change. Right now, if, you list, if Steve lifts a property and puts it in the MLS, he also includes how much he would pay a buyer agent to sell that property. Realtors are used to going to the MLS to look at how much would I be paid. And the settlement agreement will require all the realtor-owned MLSs in the country to remove that information from the, settle from the MLS. Uh, realtors will still compensate each other. They'll still share. They just won't do it through the MLS. And part of the settlement agreement is to make sure that sellers and buyers know that commissions are negotiable based on the services provided by realtors. And so that is how that information will be determined and shared realtor to realtor. Okay, all right. Now, when so we talk about buyer's agent, see, if you will, in this, this form, that's something that, um, from uh, long story short, would be just something that a piece of paper that basically states that I, as the realtor, have the opportunity to represent Joe the buyer. Is that fair? That you represent Joe the buyer for the purpose of, it could be, this is the one house I want you to help me buy. It could be, I'll buy any four bedroom house in Franklin County. It could be whatever the buyer and the agent specify. And then it lists the, the buyer's duties, it lists your duties, and it, and it works beautifully. Most transactions get complicated at some point and a buyer agent can help take it to closing. Complicated? Uh, <laughs> not for you, I'm sure, but um, for many others. Oh, goodness, good stuff there, Laura. All right, so, um, and then the, the second point, you talked about uh, commissions being negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that will take place and when we talk about negotiation, that's a conversation that happens between a buyer's agent and the buyer, right? Or seller's agent and the seller? Correct. Fair? Okay. And then the communication on those two pieces will happen between the two agents? Correct. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Um, obviously, this is pretty, I mean, we talked March 15th, so it's pretty new. Um, obviously, you've spent some time reading all that information. Um, it's fair to say that um, this is what we think now, but there could be, as we move, this, this is kind of a moving, flowing, it's a living thing right now. Is that fair? It is. Again, the court has to approve it. Um, interested parties have the right to review it. I think the Department of Justice has the right to review it. So it certainly could change at the moment. It's targeting mid-July to take effect. 
Um, we are evaluating uh, because we already have forms, but we'll probably have to change a little of the language in the forms. We know we will have to change the MLS. Um, so we are already getting ramped up to be ready. Okay. And whenever the deadline is, I know our association and the Realtor Association nationwide will be ready to implement. Yeah. And I, I think it's uh, fair to say we're, we're all kind of trying to get our head around and understand where we are today. As we move along, I think those rules, parameters will become much more clearer. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be able to have a better understanding moving forward. But communication is a big, you know, if you're in the process of selling a home or buying a home, let's have that conversation with your with your realtor. Um, have a have a an open and you know frank conversation to try to understand. Hey, wh what does this potentially mean or impact? It could be it's not going to be any change today because of where you're at right now in this in that your specific situation. But you know, as we move forward in the future, as things become a little more clear, we'll be able to um, well we'll be able to have a better understanding uh, of, of what business as usual is going Correct. to look like. The new normal, so to speak. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, then. It's kind of scary, Laura. I think I've spent enough time with you. You might know <laughs> what you're thinking. Uh-oh. Thank you, Laura. You're so welcome. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to let everything wrap up this adventure in real estate. Take care.